Welcome back to our online audience. You'll notice that we're running on full standard time, which is about two minutes slower than Google, but what does Google know? Um, there's been a lot of debate um, happening online. I just wanted to let you know that we actually trended briefly. I'm told in the Twitter sphere that actually means something important. But I guess yesterday and today in the UK has been a bit of a slow news day, nothing much <laughs> happening. Um, it's my great pleasure today to introduce uh, Ninka Vandenbroek, who is um, a specialist from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine and leads the Centre for Maternal and Newborn Health. And it's fantastic that we have a whole session looking at reproductive health and uh, sexual violence because it's an area that actually, while MSF has quite a lot of um, field programs around this, we've really neglected in terms of looking at the evidence and how we can add to that and improve our programs. So thank, thank you, Ninka. Uh, thank you very much. To be here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether my microphone is working. Is it working? Good. Um, and I'm very pleased with the range of presentations we're about to hear. Uh, good luck to all our presenters who will all be sticking to 10 minutes, and therefore there is loads of time for questions. And the first person speaking is uh, Timothy Harrison. Uh, Timothy, would you care to come up? Uh, Timothy has joined MSF since 2009 and has worked in uh, quite a large number of countries, including South Sudan, and he's presenting some work from that today. Uh, DRC, Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, and Myanmar. Uh, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you, and good morning. And uh, thank you to the committee for the opportunity to present our project today. The conflict in South Sudan started in December of 2013. A civil war which largely has followed ethnic lines, Dinka versus Nuer, and continues until today. This has led to large population displacements in key areas around the country and a general breakdown in healthcare services. IDPs, or internally displaced persons, fled through areas endemic for the parasitological disease, visceral leishmaniasis, such as in Lankian, where we observed a large epidemic last year. MSF has uh, treated VL in South Sudan and Sudan for 20 years with over 20,000 cases, 50,000 cases treated. The last outbreak uh, was in 2009, 2012 with over 18,000 cases throughout the country. Lankian at its peak in this outbreak saw nearly 300 patients, 800 patients admitted in September of this year. Of, of 2014. As you can see, actually this outbreak started in the late December of 2013 and has continued on to clearly the largest outbreak that this project has ever seen. In total in, in 2014, MSF treated more than 6,700 cases of, of VL and Lankian, 6,000 of those cases including its two outreach sites. This photograph was taken in January of this year. This tent at its peak houses 50 patients and their caretakers and was at capacity from August through November. The man we see here being assisted by relatives is severely affected by VL. This is quite a, a clinical presentation, if you will, and I want to spend just a minute uh, to give you a primer on the disease. Clinical, clinical suspicion and the case definition are used to make the case for testing. In an, ep in an epidemic, it's actually easier because your clinical suspicion is so high. The parasite of VL attacks the immune system, primarily affecting bone marrow, the lymph nodes, but it's a systemic disease, so all of the organ systems are affected. Fever, splenomegaly, wasting, lymphadenopathy make the case for, uh, for testing. The splenomegaly in particular is an important uh, uh, documentation finding. Your spleen you normally can't feel. It lives uh, protected up under your left rib cage. But in certain diseases, including VL, it enlarges or swells. And it's actually uh, uh, palpatable and uh, measurable, which is an important part. It's measured in centimeters. And it's uh, one of the findings that we make uh, on the, in the diagnosis of VL. In terms of evaluation of cure, cure is a bit of a misnomer. There's no sterility from the parasite. 
What it is is the body has recovered enough such that uh, your own immune system can fight off the disease. So subjective improvement, the patient feels well, he looks well. Improvement of anemia, uh, a hallmark of, of VO. And spleen size reduction. So you measure spleen size on admission and discharge. And after admission, you also uh, measure the hemoglobin. So improvement of these two key factors is involved in the uh, evaluation of cure. If you can't clinically cure someone, which uh, more than two thirds of the patients in VL can be established uh, as a clinical improvement, you can do laboratory testing if needed. The primary uh, laboratory test, the lymph node aspirate, however, is, uh, the, uh, the performance of the test is not optimal. A spleen aspirate is much better, but it's uh, restricted in its use, and uh, some vulnerable, vulnerable groups, uh, you can't do it. In terms of VL in pregnancy, we had certain challenges with the pregnant uh, population. They were more difficult to evaluate for VL. In advanced pregnancy, for example, the spleen size is harder to palpate and, uh, and, uh, and very difficult to measure. Uh, the gravid abdomen moves uh, much of the organ systems around, uh, uh, preventing this uh, important diagnostic sign. Pregnancy itself, especially in the first and second trimester, there's a physiological anemia. So your hemoglobin level naturally drops during pregnancy. Both of these together, plus uh, the complications of, uh, of the pregnant woman in general, make it difficult to evaluate for cure. And it's really important. Uh, these are not only one patient, but often two patients that we're trying to assure that uh, improvement has been achieved. The VL team worked closely together with the midwives. And the midwives developed an additional database for us to monitor some of the different elements of, of VL in pregnancy. So we decided to analyze pregnancy and, and VL. Females with VL aged 15 to 49 were included. The inclusion period of time is the uh, development of the maternity database. The non-maternity group was taken from the line listing for normal VL and number 230. And the maternity group was composed of pregnant women, postpartum, and post-abortion patients with a total of 69. As I said, anemia is an important hallmark of the disease, both in its uh, severity and its uh, signs of improvement. <clears throat> We divided uh, admission hemoglobin and exit hemoglobin into four categories, mild, moderate, and severe, and normal, which we assigned to greater than 11 grams per deciliter. On, at both admission and exit, maternity patients were significantly more likely to have severe anemias, especially in the moderate and severe group, over 73% versus 46 on admission. And again, on discharge, even higher in the uh, maternity group, and uh, some signs of improvement in the, in the non-maternity group. This was significantly, highly significant for both admission and exit. We also conducted a paired analysis. The histogram on the left shows the difference between admission and exit hemoglobins per individual. The no group is the non-maternity, and the yes is the maternity group. The non-maternity histogram is weighted towards the right, showing clinical improvement. And the maternity group on the, uh, on the yes side is weighted towards the left, or showing less improvement. And this is uh, shown also in the paired t-test, where mean admission hemoglobins and exit hemoglobins and the mean difference were calculated with a 95% confidence in the limits in brackets. The non-maternity group showed improvement, although slightly, and this was statistically significant. The maternity group showed a mean difference of, of minus 0.41, and although this, uh, this was not clinically significant, as it, uh, statistically significant as, it crossed, as the confidence limits crossed zero.
The parasite creates a, a large burden, and uh, uh, anemia, especially early in, in the treatment, often falls. Uh, rehydration and the continued disease process of hemolysis. But by, uh, by exit, we, we expect uh, patients to have some stabilization of their hemoglobin levels, and uh, in most cases, improvement. Next, we, look at, we looked at splenomegaly. Both groups showed uh, spleen reduction, which is what we look for. However, the large number of zeros uh, indicating no measurement or no improvement, or perhaps in the case of, of pregnant women, the inability to measure, plays into the uh, improvement that we see. Both uh, groups showed a, a, a spleen reduction uh, after admission and exit, and both were uh, statistically significant. In terms of size of the spleen, though, I, I take note at this slide. Often you see spleen sizes that are six or eight centimeters in, in size. So the zero values here really play a role in terms of the mean spleen size, both in admission and exit, for both groups, actually. Finally, we looked at pregnancy outcomes. This slide should be taken very cautiously as the confounding of the proportion of pregnancies and deliveries in the MSF clinic are difficult to analyze. For this, we took uh, non-VL patients from the normal maternity program in Lankian and compared the rate, the proportion of stillbirths in the VL group versus the non-VL group. Clearly, the proportion was higher. <coughs> seven of 25, and this was highly significant as well. We also looked at prematurity, and again, the VL group was significantly more proportion of premature deliveries versus the non-VL group. Additionally, the, the women who present to maternity tend to do so with obstetrical problems. So this comparison and estimate for the, for the VL group may actually be underestimated. We need to do, uh, this, we need to do an analysis on a larger data set to uh, further confirm these findings. In conclusion, pregnancy and VL are thought to be mutually exacerbating. For example, the anemia and your susceptibility to infection. Anemia does not appear to improve during treatment of pregnant VL women, but more aggressive treatment for anemia and an analysis of the anemia should be considered. Spleen evaluation appears to be a challenge. Innovative ideas regarding the diagnosis of VL in pregnancy is needed. VL appears to lead to a higher rate of stillbirths and premature deliveries. Further analysis of a larger data set is to be carried out. This was a, a really uh, a well put together project and I want to thank the uh, author group, in particular the midwives, Mama Jane and Habiba, who uh, really generated the interest and, uh, and their uh, database really enabled uh, the project to go forward. Court and Ruby Sidqui, Ruby who pushed this project, uh, we started uh, uh, in late February and uh, have, able, have been able to uh, present what I think is uh, uh, a really uh, interesting uh, project today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. Um, the floor is open for some questions. So if you have a question, would you care to raise your hand and make yourself known to one of the people as <coughs> a gentleman in a gray t-shirt in the middle? Uh, hi, Rafael van Lemberg from uh, MSF Belgium. Um, which treatment were your, uh, your patients getting? Are they all on ambisome or uh, is it uh, the older treatment? Yeah, there are there's three treatment arms essentially. Uh, ambisome therapy uh, and all the pregnant uh, patients were on ambisome. Uh, but, uh, and the, the non-pregnant patients uh, were a mix of SSGPM uh, and ambisome, depending on where they were in the severity of their illness.
Thank you for that. Given that uh, anemia or hemoglobin level seems to be quite a difficult measure for uh, cure or improvement uh, in pregnancy, could you say anything about the other uh, four or so um, measures of improvement, including perhaps fever, which um, you mentioned? So the perception of wellness, I think, is really important. And uh, of course, that's uh, the first thing you look at. The patient feels better, looks better. Weight gain, which we also look at in, in BL, or at least stabilization and return of appetite. Weight gain is really confounded by pregnancy, so it's, it's a little bit hard to, to sort that out. Uh, and hemoglobin levels, I think, are important, uh, uh, not just in the treatment, but also uh, clinically in terms of what we saw perhaps in uh, stillbirths and the like. Um, so it's, it's, it's really a challenge, and uh, I'm not so sure we have the answers yet. Uh, in terms of uh, spleen size, uh, ultrasonography may play a role, at least for the identification of splenomegaly. Um, but then you also need competent sonographers. Thank you. Okay. Yes, there's a question there. Hi, um, I guess it's a fairly predictable question coming from me, but did you look at HIV co-infection in those women as well? We do uh, routinely test. and. Uh, uh, especially in this uh, epidemic, we found uh, an extremely low prevalence, uh, and none in the maternity group. Okay, thank you very much for an exciting presentation. And, uh